we're recording. Again, watch out for, because of the FOMC, there might be an interest rate change today, so trading could be difficult as people wait for that to come out. Uh, taking a look, this cable was an ITM. Um, all I'd say is if this is Asia set trade, if it was London or US, that's an insane trade. Uh, Confluence-wise was decent, Murray Math line. Uh, FIBO is 161, and you had your little Ken Chow talky talky line. Stock was good, overbought, oversold, with a TA confirm on it. Not too bad if it was Asia. Um, I, we could talk a little bit about Asia. Asia will typically look like this. What you're looking for is the breakouts that happen, but you don't get a huge spike. I typically look for something to just pop out of the range a little bit, and then I'll take it back in. If you can get confluence on it, great. I do rely more on stochastics during the Asia and Aussie session than I do the institutional levels. It becomes more of current market conditions. I focus on those because what will happen is you'll get it stuck in between like these two and it just doesn't go anywhere. So it just kind of goes up and down, up and down. If you trade Asia and you haven't sent me charts, send me charts for Asia. I, I could use some examples to help people out. I traded it Tuesday. Uh, I'm not going to say what I did yet. I need to try it one more time or a few more times to see if it was a fluke, but I tweaked the shit out of value charts to make it respond to these flat markets, which I didn't know it could do, and a friend of mine showed me. So if that works, that would be awesome, because it did identify the... It actually... I don't know how, this one isn't a good example. If we get one, I'll show you. But I, he showed me how he trades Asia and what he did to value charts, and it was pretty cool. Um, next one is... Man, my eyes are blurry, too, so if I say something wrong, just smack me. <sighs> Let me load it up, and then I'll copy and paste it here. Actually, I'll just drag this shit. Uh, let me sneeze. <laughs> And if you're listening to this recording, I apologize. I just don't want to put this off for another day. So, Or if you're live in the room and you're having to hear me freaking sniffle and cough into your ear. Um, this one, just from looking at it, this was Euro GBP. Not too sure which got you into that one. I, I hate I can't put a crosshair up. I have no idea why you would have taken this trade, honestly. Yeah, my sickness is affecting my brain. Okay, so what I can see is... 400 level on the current FIBO swing. You had a round number. Value charts. Okay, this is, for me this would be a bad trade, but I can say he did wait on one thing. He didn't jump in just because levels were being hit, because if he did, it would have been this chart, right, this one here. At least he waited for everything to line up, but price action-wise, that's just a horrible trade. When you see these little tiny candles like this, I bet volume was extremely low on this, and you don't want to trade during those times, especially when you have a slow movement up like this. It's, I guess, what I call a slow bleed, because typically it'll just push through a level and it won't even respond to it. I definitely would have taken it. Now, rules-wise, okay, so ignoring that the price action on this thing is just fugly. Rules-wise, one, two, three, you, everything there was there, so technically a sound trade, but by this price action, a horrible trade, just by the candlestick formations. But if we look, he had a confirm, value charts hit eight, it was core qualified. <laughs> The 0 to 100 line was shrinking, so that means that this, the hourly FIBOs were more pertinent than here, and that we'd be looking at a reversal in this point. Round number, the the 423 on the FIBO. Seems to be London lunch. Thank you. Yeah, I avoid trading during lunch. Remember, you can always go to... And I say this at the end of every day in the live chat. And I'm, again, I'm really sorry because my sniffling seems to get worse as soon as I hit record. <laughs> but yeah, remember you can always go up to Tools and the History Center 
and take a look at your volumes. If you're trading the f like on a five minute candles, let's look at Euro USD. All you have to do is find the pair you're looking for. And yeah, my eyes are really that blurry. Euro USD, five minute. And we're looking at volume levels here. This is pre US open, so they're not that high. Volume's gonna differ from broker to broker, but when you see little candles like that, definitely check on volume. And if you see it one fluctuating from like two hundred to third from two hundred for one five minutes down to like thirty or forty, that's a the f the, the range there is too big. You want to look for a consistent t consistency across on on it. That means you have a nice group mentality in the market. Even if it's going from like 150 up to 300, that's fine. You just want to see that there's a shit ton of people in the market. Uh, next one. God, I'm glad I'm not doing a full webinar because I don't think I'd make it through it. Uh, just so you can see, this is the journal I'm looking at. You see, if you're wondering why I'm not covering all your trades, a lot of them are black and highlighted out. I'll try and import it into Excel, but to be honest, I haven't even put Office on this computer because I don't use it too much, so I imported it up into Google. But I think this will be enough to get the idea. So our next one is going to be, I think it's the devil. Yep, this is US CAD, so this is the devil. Let me close this. For some reason, I'm getting really laggy. <laughs> I think it's when I run any meeting and the recording software. Okay, so this one, uh, you'll see this one kind of. We had a small, I guess you could say a small range, which was very small. And then price starts to move up into what we'd call a waterfall. Now, as in waterfall strengths, we can look at it. Candles. It's small, then bigger, then it's showing weakness, then small, bigger, showing weakness. So strength-wise, not that big of a... Uh, oh my god, I'm sorry about sniffling. Strength-wise, the waterfall strength on it's not super strong. It is still something, if you get into the trade, you'd want to ha have a hell of a lot of confluence. I typically would try and avoid this type of thing. But we had a previous... I could see why. We had a previous month's high, a monthly high which then drops in all the other highs for the day. Um. I don't see how you won that one, but that's okay. Entering on this candle would have been, unless it was, I bet this one pushed it up more, so... Okay, so zero to, but first let's look at current market conditions. One, two, three, four back. One, two, three, four back. So this is your entry candle. Uh, I guess you have it marked. Thumbs up. Let me see on the thing if it's marked as a win. Either way, let's look at the trade. Uh, screen is still OB or is just more. Uh, it should be US CAD. It's not. Huh, give me a sec. Okay, I'm going to pause sharing. And tell me if this comes up to US CAD then. Did that fix it? Nope. Okay, so it's just stop screen sharing and I'll restart it. <laughs> just, um, okay, I'm restarting the sharing. Okay, so let me know if that kicks it in. Probably after I restarted it again. Durr, I'm an idiot. Okay, give me a sec, me. 
shut down a couple more things. Okay, this one's US CAD, which is one that I definitely don't enjoy trading. Um, just, and I tell everyone this, whether you're new or old, US CAD has the lowest performing stats. It's because it is the devil. Fucking American Canadians are just pot smokers and lazy, so <laughs> they let price just keep going and going. I'm in America, so I'm allowed to say that. But uh, typically, this is the typical response. He hasn't marked it as 9 TM, so maybe his broker gave him a break. But let's look at the trade. This was the entry candle. This is the typical reaction that you'll see on US CAD, and it's one of the reasons statistically it had the lowest performing. Uh, price came up. Confluence wise, we had one, two, three institutional levels. Four, actually, because we had a round number. We go over here. RSI, I'm sorry, stochastics is spiked. Value charts is hit. And we have a confirm. I mean, that's a perfect freaking setup just about. Plus, by looking at this, it would have been previous month's high, monthly high, weekly high, daily high, all that fun shit. Everything would have been hitting. And by the look of it, it the only thing that it was... Sh uh, did it... It says screen sharing is stopped on my end. Did it stop on y'all's end? You can see my little mousey moving. Okay, cool. Okay, trade-wise, like technical-wise, the only thing I could say is this thing was going up into somewhat of a waterfall. I definitely want to avoid these because you can see what happens. Um, oh, God. The, you had just about a perfect setup. I mean, you couldn't get any more perfect than that, and price still pushed a little bit past it. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> I'm trying not to cough. But price pushed a little bit past that. One, I blame it on being the devil. And two, that it was kind of pushing upwards. We didn't have much of a range forming. All we had was an upwards trend. It slowly here consolidated and then upward trend again. So I'm saying make sure if you're trading, you're trading it on a range. If you're going to take a trade like this, and it still didn't work out, because I'm best guessing if you went back here and looked, since this is a previous month's high, you could probably find some support and resist back here to confirm it. But, I mean, Jesus, we had one, two, three, four... Four institutionals and current market conditions. Everything was saying that was a reversal, but it pushed up one, and then it stopped, and then it's continuing up. So you want to stay out of when you see something like that. A waterfall will just ignore all levels. Uh, I haven't been asking any questions on the chart before I close it. Move to the next one. You understand why this one is just technical-wise. It is a perfect setup. Chart-wise, it's a horrible setup. Just because of the candlesticks. Alright. What do we got next? This is AJ. Give me a sec while it comes up, then I'll drag it over. I'm sorry, I hope when I cover up the mic it kind of deafens it a little bit for you. Okay, now I'm getting sweaty. It's lovely. Okay, so this one. Uh, let me get over. first thing I notice, the center of gravity is being squeezed a little bit. This is something to watch for. It's something you will see over and over and over again, that you have a downward drop, price moves up, and it can be either or. When the center of gravity is curved like this, I just stay out. But this is also the same pattern I see, where we get a downward drop and an upward movement comes right out of the cog, and you think, well, that's a good trade. Just keep an eye out on this pattern, because what you'll typically see is a lot of times it doesn't do what it, you think it would do and just drop back down. That was weird. Give me a sec. Let me shut down something. Close. Goodbye. There is a... F Fucking spider on my monitor. Sorry. 
<laughs> I'm a mess today. That's always good. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Where was I? Okay, this one. When you see the center of gravity, the first thing that I look at this is the center of gravity looks like someone... You can't see what I'm doing. It looks like somebody put their hand on the end, end of the center of gravity and squeezed it a little bit. Remember, we're looking for a nice even spread. When the center of gravity is distorted, it means that it's having a hard time... that the center of gravity's algorithms are having a hard time keeping up with the market. I'm shoving as much coffee into me as I can get right now to try and sound half awake. Let's go to the technical side of it. This was a weak trade. Institutional-wise, we didn't really have anything. Uh, we did have 161 on the current FIBO swing, but it was coming downward, so that one would have been... it was looking for a downward move down here. So, to be honest on this one, we really didn't have anything. This is... and please don't be offended, but this is a horrible trade. Um, we couldn't even pull in Bollinger Bands into this. We can't pull into the hourly FIBO support into this. All we had was a 161, but it's the opposite way, because that 161... it can be a support and a resist, but typically we're looking for it as a downward move like this, and it was lined up the wrong way. So, again, don't be offended, but that is a horrible trade. We really... D remember, what did you have for institutional? Nothing. For current market conditions, nothing. We had a round number that had been breached, and then it shot up through it right here. Really no reason to jump into that trade. All there was was value charts. And value charts, all that is doing is getting us to the chart. It's not giving us a reason to trade. So, that one is a no-no. If you've noticed, lots didn't get to come to this one. All he does is babble my ear off. Okay, so we have another... Let me close this one. Next up is the devil again, I think. One, two down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the coffee's helping a little bit. At least I'm feeling more awake, but sorry if I'm sniffling more. Next up, US CAD. Another waterfally one. This one looks almost the same as... We've seen this one already. Huh. So... That... Am I missing something? Okay, we've already seen this one. I don't know, I could be losing my mind. USD, JPY, let's bring that one up. Come on. If you guys have charts or questions, remember, you just speak up. These are honestly some decent examples because the markets are shit on these, putting it bluntly. And we see some bad trades. I prefer to get the bad trades than I do the perfect setups because most of the time people can see the perfect setups pretty easily. Okay, the first thing I would say here is open up your chart. I mean, this is just a mess. When I say open up your chart, I mean hold down, put your mouse over into these numbers here, hold down the left hand mouse button and you drag it up or down. This will open up your chart a little bit to give you a better picture. What I try and do for m myself is the center of gravity. Let's say we have big movements, I will shrink the chart so I can see both sides of the center of gravity. This one I would expand out a little bit. <laughs> okay. This is, I, I swear, everything, just nobody wants me to work this week. Okay, I stopped it, and let me do resume again. Okay, it's resuming. Let me know if it kicks back in. You should come up to a US CAD chart with a tiny little bit of shit on it. I'm going to shut down one more thing, see if we can get it running a little better. Exit. Goodbye, Manicam. Okay, did the screen come back up? Let's see a funky looking US CAD chart. Okay, let me stop screen sharing and start it over. I don't know what it is today. My shit just ain't loving me. Did 
desktop. Should make for a nice recording. I try not to cuss at him, but today I'm just like, ugh. Alright, let me know if that brings it back up. Okay, cool. So USCAD, what I was saying is, you see how tiny this is? You, it makes it difficult to see the movements. The first thing you want to do is on the left-hand side where these numbers are, hold down your left-hand mouse, and if you drag it up or down holding down the mouth, mouse, <laughs> it will it'll make the, it'll stretch out the chart a little bit. This right here is just too tight. I mean, it doesn't really give you a very good look on the true market conditions. Guessing, I could see we're having a little bit of a bounce this chart, I will say, at least looks a little bit better because we are having movement, even though it's slow and delayed, from bottom of cog, top of cog, bottom of cog, top of cog. So at least we're not in a full freaking blown waterfall on this one. Uh, Trade-wise, let's take a look at it. This was your... I don't know which one was your entry candle. I can't tell by the mark. I think it's this one, which would have given us a daily support one. And let me look down at the bottom. It was a tiny little range, that's why I mean stretching this out would help a lot. Uh, the 0 to 100 is tiny, so the 100 levels, when I say 0 to 100, we're looking at the current FIBO swing. And that is 0 to 100, so that means our inner levels apply more than our outer levels. We did get 1, 2, 3, 4 back, 1, 2, 3, 4 back. To be honest, I would have entered on this one, but it looks like you entered on this one. I mean, that's... If you delayed it or missed the entry, if price hits the level again for me, I'll re-enter. But... Either way, both of those candles are decent entries. Uh, let's go by the... St Stat-wise, we had institutional levels 1, 2, 3, so that was good. Current market conditions, we had 1, 2... And three for stochastic. So, very good trade. Just the chart, stretch it out a little bit. It'll help you out seeing what's actually going on on the damn thing. And don't trade UCAD. I mean, if you're having good luck with the trade, it maybe I'm just an idiot and I can't trade it. Next, I think we have an OTM. Let's take a look at it. Trying not to breathe because every time I breathe and I want to snort. <laughs> this one doesn't seem to be wanting to load. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Let me try the other one to see if it sucks. I'd rather get the OTMs. And good lord, come on. Neither one of them are loading now. Make sure it's it's about perfect. Make sure everything's working on my end. Facebook. The internet's working fine because Facebook popped right up. If anyone tries to take a screenshot of a chart, does it fail or work? So I'm just getting spinning now. <laughs> I don't have two of them open. Give me a sec. Let me open mine up real quick. <laughs> For some reason, none, none of the rest of them are opening. It just goes to spinning like the MQL5 site is pissy at me. Figures. I'll give it like 30 more seconds. I think one of them did pop. Let's see. Okay, this one's AUD JPY. The 
screen sharing still working okay? I guess I have to check now. I don't know what the hell's going on. What's funny is my chat doesn't... Uh, there, my chat refreshed finally. Okay, again, on this one, stretch out the center of gravity. S fill up your chart a little bit more so you can see some decent price movements. Uh, first thing, not too bad on the price movement. It's a light upwards trend, kind of stair-stepping. Um, let me see if I can... I'll ha hit me up in Skype in a little bit if you're having issues with your trend or whatever. Um, I guess we could try it out. I have an indicator you could try out that tells you whether it's ranging or trending. It's a decent one. It works okay. On this trade, let us see. What do we got? So we had a movement from bottom top, then it moves up and down. Again, look at these tiny candles, and I can't tell if they're really tiny candles because the charts push together so much. Stretch it out a bit so that we could see what size these candles actually are. But in my opinion, these tiny ass little candles, and then we get a movement down. So it looks like you took the trade here, um, possibly here. I don't know. One, two, three. You had one, one institutional current market conditions. 0 to 100. The 100 level would have been applicable. We're at the bottom of the hour. This trade looks familiar, like one that I took and I freaking lost. Sorry, I'm talking to myself there. Okay, so let's take a look at the whole thing again. Again, stretch the chart out. It'll give me a much better picture and it'll probably give you a much bit better picture of what the market is doing. We had one institutional, one current Stochastics was bottomed out one, two, three candles ago. Value charts and there. Honestly, I'm having a hard time saying on it. I would say it's weak on the institutional. Good on current market conditions, so it might have just been a fluke that it didn't work out for you. I mean, they're not all going to go your way. It would be a lot easier if, like, again, stretch them out a little bit so we can see what the hell's going on on the chart, because this makes it difficult to determine price action. For me, this whole section here of these tiny little candles would have been a warning. And I'm not too sure. I, I just basically, I can't read this chart due to the tiny, tiny little candles. So, institutional-wise, a little weak. Current market conditions, good. That's what I'll say about that one. Other than that, I don't have too much of a judgment on it. And what do we have here, UJ? <laughs> And again, stretch out the charts. It'll help you a lot, trust me, especially on entry. Technical side of this one, here was your entry candle. What I get is previous weekly high, a Murray math number. If we go back, one, two, three, one, two, three. Value charts and stochastics look good. Current market conditions, I would say, are pretty weak. So we had one institutional, previous weekly high, which would be considered an institutional because that's a long term. Two institutionals. It hit the 100 section of the FIBO, which you can see it's been contained in that. So we can come up with three. Stochastics would be four reasons plus value charts. Not too bad, but again, I can't tell if these tiny little candles are actually tiny little candles. I'm seeing a lot of freaking dojis and pin bars. I th have the feeling you're trading... That's 2015. I don't even know what time that is, but this is Trader's Way. I have the feeling you're trading during low volume times. So just remember, check your volumes, and if you're trading, because that's just horrible, the way that looks. I wouldn't be trading during that time period, because what will happen is, yes, that might be a reverse or a good setup, because but due to low volume, it'll just bounce crazy. So I would highly recommend checking your volumes, spreading the chart out, and trying to avoid the low volume times. And we'll pull up, actually, that was the last one I got. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, so before we get going, um, let me see real quick. And I cough y'all to death. I'm using something, what is it, Dota Trend? D-O-D-A Trend? I'm removing some of the crap from it so it's a little clinger on the chart. I'll post it up in the Skype room a little bit later. If you're having problems with the trend or range portion of trading axis, like right now it says it's range bound, which it is. Uh, let's see if we can get anything that says. This one says range bound. This one says trending. So you can see it's actually, and it's designed to to fit whatever time frame you're on. So if I, if you don't see it in an hour, somebody smack me in the Skype room and say poke post up the damn trending ranging. If you're new to TA or you just in general have issues with getting in on trending or ranging, it'll be down here and it just says current trend trending or if we go here, current trend trending. It'll help keep you out a little bit of trouble. This is range bound trending. Anyone have a pair they want to see what it's doing? I'll throw it up on there real quick so you can see if it's accurate enough for you if you're confused on a pair so we can see if it can tell you what the pair is doing. If not, just bug me in about an hour if I haven't thrown it up, because I am going to actually go steam myself to death with some Vicks to try and be able to breathe. We st I still have to run through the Asia setup, but again, let me try for a few more days with the changes my friend gave me to value charts, because it's pretty drastic, the changes he gave me, but it works very well on a flat market in Asia. So I'm kind of excited about that one. Um... Other than that, if there's no more questions or anything, guys, have a good one. I'll be in the room, and I'll be over in uh, the binaryoptions.net room for chat, so you can always come hit me up there. Friday, hopefully Lois will have me some charts. Uh, now I said whose charts we'll be using on Friday, but <laughs> hopefully she'll have some charts. And we'll go over her stuff. Uh, again, hit me up in about an hour and I'll post the indicator up. I really like it because I've never found an indicator on a five minute chart that is somewhat accurate. And when I say somewhat accurate, like this one switched to trending right now. I can't even click on things. You get the point. I'll post it up in about an hour so you can try it out and give me feedback on it. But other than that, have a good 